All right, guys, I'm here on page 133. Um, I'm going to write this at the top, too, because you can't see it at the bottom. Um, and we are going to do some practice problems about diffusion and osmosis um, using these little U-tubes. So these U-tubes are a tube shaped like a U, obviously. But the thing about them is they are separated, both sides, by a semi-permeable membrane. So depending on what this semi-permeable membrane um, is permeable to will depend on what's going to happen at the end, which is why we're doing these practice problems. So in my first example, I'm going to do a pretty easy one. So let's say that um, the semi-permeable membrane is permeable to water, which I'll represent with blue dots. And let's say it's also permeable to these pink dots. So both the pink dots and the blue dots are able to cross through the um, semi-permeable membrane in order to reach homeostasis. So let's say that I start out with a higher concentration of pink solutes on the left side than I do on the right side. So whenever we talk about osmolarity, we often use words like hypertonic and hypotonic. Um, in situations like this, my left side is going to be hypertonic because it has more pink solutes than the right side, which makes my right side hypotonic. So in this case, my semi-permeable membrane is actually permeable to both of these things. So they're going to create balance by switching back and forth. So if I have more pink ones over here, some of them are going to cross through that semi-permeable membrane over here to the right in order to create balance and to reach an isotonic um, ratio. Um, my right side has more water, so it is going to move to the left side. So my blue dots are going to move this way and my pink dots are going to move this way, and we're going to end up with both of them being equal on both sides. So we have the same concentration on the left and the right for both my water and my solutes. So they're going to still be equal heights. Okay, where it starts to get a little trickier is when your semi-permeable membrane is not permeable to whatever the thing is it's passing through. So let's say um, my second example. We'll say my semi-permeable membrane is still permeable to water, which I will do with my blue dots. And let's say that it is not permeable to purple dots. Okay, so my per oh, those look really similar. Let me switch colors. Hold on. Let's say that it's not permeable to orange dots. You can actually tell a difference now. Okay, that means my blue dots can pass through the semi-permeable membrane, but my orange dots cannot. So let's say we have an equal amount of solution. In my left side, though, let's say that I have less orange solutes than I do on my right side. Okay, so my right side is going to be hypertonic to my left side. Okay, because when we're talking about osmolarity, again, we like to use these vocab words. Um, osmolarity is the sum of solute particles per liter of water. So it's basically how concentrated something is. Um, so I'm going to put solute particles per liter. Okay, it's essentially like the concentration. Okay, so the osmolarity on the right is higher. Okay, and if we just fill in the space with my blue dots, my water. Okay, in order to create homeostasis, um, we want to even out 
both sides. The problem is my orange dots can't move over to the side like they would want to. So instead, the next best thing, water can cross the membrane, so the water is going to move to the right, where there's more of these solute particles um, in order to reach a equal um, concentration on both sides. So after a while, these water particles are going to move to the right to kind of try and balance out this ratio. And we're going to end up with a taller side over here because now my water has moved in order to even out the concentrations. So there's going to be a height difference in the volumes now that my water has moved over to the right side. Okay, another one that we'll do is let's say that I have a <clears throat> tube filled with all three of these things. So let's say that on my left here, this membrane is permeable to water. It is permeable to the pink dots. But it is not permeable to the orange dots. So in my solution, let's say that I have um, on my right side, I'm going to put some pinks, some oranges, and some blues. And on my left side, let's say I only have blue. Okay, in this case, my blue ones can cross the membrane, my orange ones cannot, and my pink ones can. So, my blue ones, there's more blue ones on this side, so my blue ones want to go over here to the right. My pink ones can cross the membrane, it's permeable to it. So my pink ones, there's more over here and none over here, are going to want to move this way so that they're even on both sides. My orange ones cannot cross the membrane because the membrane is not permeable to the orange ones. So the next best thing is for water to try and even that concentration out. So my pink ones are going to end up being an equal amount. Okay, but my orange ones, there's going to be more over here because they can't cross. And my blue ones are going to try and fill in and create the same balance on this side. Because even though these are different types of solutes, we want the concentrations to be the same. So more of the water is going to move to the right than it's going to stay over here. It's going to have a net movement to the right in order to balance out um, the osmolarity on this side. So that now both sides are going to have the same concentrations of particles um, in relation to how much water there is. So in this one, the volume is also going to increase on the right.